Nasty by NKZN this past I week. I know. Hey, I missed that that trip so much. I had a neurologist appointment that was done months yeah. ago. You know, the specialist. You can't. Yeah. You can't oh, yeah. Because if I had just cancel it, I would have got six months again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. you guys, you guys did a great job. You guys did a great job, honestly. Yeah, it was. A, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we uh, had. And a, I hear the minister was was with with you as well, which is great. Yeah, throughout the the, the yeah, entire for the four days. Yeah, that was that was an excellent initiative from her. Good support. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely, mm. Okay, I, thank I, you. I, I, um, Yes, I'm in Cape Town. I'm in Cape Town. Oh, I thought you were saying Mom Pondwini. <laughs> hey, I'm funding. And then I've got my two jabs, so I can't be saying comorbidities anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Even the over 60s must come to work now. No excuses. <laughs> no excuses. No excuses. No excuses, my dear. <laughs> okay, Where's thank you. Cape Town? I must go get my coffee. Yeah, go and get your coffee before we start. Yeah, exactly. Good morning, members. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, Uche person is trying to log in. As soon as she is in, we'll start the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sis P. Thanks, Sis. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Chair. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, and how are you, Chair? Hey. All right, in the Good, good. Morning, uh, Slala. How are you? Very well, thanks yourself. I'm great, thank you. 
I yeah, hope you travel safe and sound. Uh, wonderful warm greetings from you, from your family at the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Uh, I think you have a, a niece there uh, <laughs> from the Mashati family. I said, ah, if you are Mashati, you must be related to my lead. <laughs> she says, no, ask the wife to my uncle. I said, ah, your family, your home. <laughs> <laughs> God, so thank said, you so much, Shalom. Thank you. I'll check God, on. God, I said warm greetings to you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, honorable member Bama, ni api lam pango mo. Ipi li le tata ni jani na. Yes, api la gabi ko ndo. Eh, I'm so close to KZN. Eh, no, but in pi lo bing adi vume. Nanso ke benza chuma di funu pi li le. So do we have any apologies today? Yes, Chair. We've got an apology from MP Breit. And we've got... Oh, MP Breit. She didn't say anything. I, I must check on my comrade, you know. She wasn't at oversight <coughs> and she's not attending today. Yes. I'm worried now. We've got a guest, Chair. We've Deputy got guests. Deputy Minister Kappa is with us. Oh. Uh, Deputy Minister is visiting us. Yes, Chas sir. Alban Fago Fagayo. Nyaoza. Nipilele Mayaoza. Dia Fuga Mkonishwa. Nenjonke. Dia Bulisa. Eh, man. We are playing a goat. I know when the Fuki the Kupete them for the operation. Kanga ngoba zilu eliza uthati na chaiba namchange. Oh. Eh. No, masi bule. No, no, diawazu. Eh, diabule la kakulu tibomku. Kosi nyos. In kosi kaku. Eh. Manyamza, mamka kas. Any apology? Yes, How Chair. Are you? I'm fine, thanks, and you, Chair. Very well, thanks. Uh, another apology, Chair, is from the Minister, is attending the National Corona Council today. And Umi oh. Mamustain is running late. She's going to join us late. Oh, I okay. think she, she's already on the platform, Chair. I'm she's sorry. already on the platform. Yes. No, that's good. Mema Tape. Fudula Stulo. Lituile. Kabo Ufile. Kibeke Leveke Kabo Northwest. But I'm here on the platform. Kibeke Leveke. Hey. Yes. No, Marubere Kile, a KZ and the Cabon or Let's Amile P. KZ was nothing. I didn't sleep last night. Homework, Auntie has to do homework of my niece. Um, when was Mandela married to Nima Dikizela? Who was Mandela's <laughs> parents? <laughs> And what was his first job? How many kids, children he has? Then I find two makas US. I, I'm trying, but I managed. To, and they said, Hey, and he's a politician, she's so clever with these things. They don't know. I no, 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 you should have just <laughs> called me. We would have done this in 10 minutes. 
And I never knew when Osekeni's name came from. I was impressed. Yeah. <laughs> Osekeni, okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> no, thanks, Jay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. No, thank you. If uh, you allow us uh, to proceed, honorable uh, members, let me uh, take uh, this opportunity uh, to welcome you all to our portfolio committee meeting. Uh, by saying good morning, Fuyemore, Molwe, recording in progress, Dumelang, um, Assalamu alaikum. May the peace be with you and with our nation in its entirety. Allow me, honorable members, to welcome you all back here today to this virtual meeting of our Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development. The first uh, virtual meeting since our recess. Honorable members, uh, much has happened since we last met, so allow me to express my delight to see you all uh, alive today on this platform. To God be the praise and the glory. Allow me to therefore, honorable members, to convey my condolences to all of you who may have lost a loved one, a parent, to therefore, a family member, to a friend, or a colleague. To all of you, we live in a time lost a where we have become so conscious of death as the specter of our mortality and vulnerability, which has become so blatant and apparent. Mamutapa, please mute your microphone. Thank you. The legendary author, Paulo Colo, uh, says in his book, The Alchemist, I quote, a brush with death always helps us to live our lives better, close quote. Just as we were coming to terms with the devastating toll that the pandemic was having on our lives, our nation was thrown into the mayhem by mindless acts of an attempted insurrection that saw the unprecedented loss of life, property, and disruption of our economy. Our country was gripped in panic as a free Jacob Zuma campaign slid into ignominy. Uh, we witnessed firsthand the devastation, devastating impact on our agriculture and other sectors, disruptions of logistics value chain, and the impact on small-scale farmers as they struggled to get feed supplies for their livestock, and as, pro uh, as produce was unable to reach the fresh produce market. Honorable members, His Excellency President Ramaphosa's Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan, as alluded to by the Minister Ibrahim Patel's Disaster Recovery Plan, are already in the process of implementation. The consequences of this attempted insurrection will be with us for a long time, and its effect will continue to be felt. Honorable members, one such area which we must remain vigilant of is how delicate racial tensions are in South Africa. And whilst we 
had a massive breakthrough in our peaceful transition to democracy in 1994. It is always just lacking below the surface. Honorable members, we hope and pray that we never, ever again descend into what happened in Phoenix. The fact that communities came under attack and felt that their peace and security was compromised. Even worse than that was the fact that vigilantism raised its ugly head under the guise of self-defense. We must, honorable members, remind ourselves again of President Nelson Folichasha Mandela's words in his inaugural address when he said, I caught, that spiritual and physical oneness we all share with this common homeland explains the depth of the pain we all carried in our hearts as we saw our country tear itself apart in a terrible conflict and as we saw it spend outlawed and isolated by the peoples of the world precisely because it has become the universal base of the pernicious ideology and practice of racism and racial oppression, close quote. I therefore, honorable members, appeal to our national leadership to be mindful of this reality at all times. We must resolve to work together to restore our commitment to 1994 to advancing the national reconciliation, nation building, and social coercion. Honorable members, if we delay addressing the endemic poverty, hunger, inequality, and unemployment that stare our people in the face at our own peril. Honorable members, today we have before us three submissions. Firstly, we welcome the submission from the South African Legal Resource Center, followed by the South African Law Society. And finally, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development will present comments and written responses received on the sectional titled amendment bill. And in doing so, honorable members, before we get underway, let me officially take this opportunity to welcome Umamu Zolega Kapa our Deputy Minister who's deployed in the executive uh, of uh, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Mm -hmm. We wish you well in uh, the tasks that has been placed in your hands and uh, we assure you a, a swift and uh, wonderful uh, engagement with our uh, portfolio committee as uh, we uh, carry the mandate uh, as a portfolio committee on doing oversight on the department. I therefore, honorable members, uh, will uh, uh, hand over to the deputy minister for opening words, and then we can get uh, these public hearings on the go. Thank you. Manyauza. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Dada Umadiba Omning. I am very much excited to be welcomed in this portfolio committee and therefore wish to use this opportunity to express my appreciation of being admitted to be part of you in this struggle, the major struggle of our a cause, a just cause, to actually ensure that the land is used by those who own it for this particular time. I am not in any way 
putting uh, the Freedom Charter as it is. But what I have experienced over time is that whatever we want to do, we depend on the land which is under our feet. Uh, taking this opportunity to also greet all the members of this uh, portfolio committee and uh, feel very much welcome and at home and uh, commit to use whatever strength I still have to work with you so that we can achieve what the chair of the portfolio committee has just stated why we exist as this portfolio committee, why we exist as this department. And therefore also appreciate that I am informed better of what is going to be done today, which is more than the orientation I've just got uh, uh, when I was actually welcomed by the minister and stated what the department is about. So what we are going to do now has really been uh, uh, rightfully uh, explained thoroughly and very informative by the chair. I am with the department and I do believe that uh, the minister has done all what she needs to do uh, to ensure that she's known uh, that she's not accounting today. Anyway, the accounting officer is here uh, Mr. Ramasodi, our acting DG. And therefore, I will, uh, through you, Chair, uh, hand over to him so that he can actually uh, 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 explain, give information as to what they did when these comments were made and what they are advising uh, in this committee to do so that we can all be at the same level and be able to move forward and carry carry out our mandate as outlined by you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sibanyamza. Manyauza. Uh, honorable members, if I may uh, just uh, lift up our program as to uh, go through the items of uh, the day. But I would uh, make a request that uh, all of us ensure that uh, we have uh, opened uh, up our uh, cameras when we speak because we are live on uh, uh, numerous uh, uh, platforms. Uh, who have an interest in uh, covering uh, these uh, proceedings. So we are live on YouTube, Twitter, as well as Facebook. The Parliament uh, TV will also be logging in as we proceed uh, with the remarks that have been uh, uh, opening remarks from the Deputy Minister. I will therefore uh, invite the submission uh, by the Legal Resource Center, the regional director, that is Ms. Sharita Samuels. You uh, may proceed. Um, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity of allowing the Legal Resources Center to speak. My name is Sharita Samuel. I'm the Regional Director of the LRC in Durban, and I co-lead the Legal Resources Center's land program. Um, as I informed Ms. Kakarza, I have a colleague with me, Ms. Annaline Turpin, who is one of our attorneys in the LRC in Cape Town, who we have nominated to speak to the subject today. So I'm going to hand over to her and I will come in at the relevant time should there be questions and further comment required. Thank you. Over to you, Annaline. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members of this portfolio committee. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, all. Um, Chair, if you would please provide me with permission to share a PowerPoint presentation. Please. 
Please uh, go ahead, Anneline. You may share the document. Uh, can I ask the Secretariat to allow uh, to share the presentation? I can't from my side. Can you do it from the side, please? I've done it. She can share. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I just... It, I can get confirmation that my screen is shared. Um, Annalyn, we can't see your screen share at the moment. Okay. Um, okay. Um, sorry. Um, is it, sorry, is it sharing now? No. Not yet. It's not, not yet. showing. Okay, let me just, okay, let me just get some assistance. Um, if you could just bear with me for a minute. Okay. Is Perfect. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, Okay, thank you. So um, this is a presentation by the Legal Resources Center. And um, before I do start the presentation, I just want to give um, the listeners the format of our presentation. So I will, of course, introduce who we are. The submissions that the Legal Resources Center has made, we've made it on behalf of the Poor Black Dwellers Movement. I will also provide information as to who the movement is. I will then speak about the amendments um, and why we feel that the current amendment in its, in its form requires a reform. I will then make comments that we feel are necessary that need to be included in the post and look at the case studies that the Legal Resources Center that we have worked on um, so as to ensure or inform the listeners that the comments and recommendations that we do make um, do come from our working knowledge on the Sectional Title Act and the um, Sectional Schemes Act, sorry, the, the Management Act. Um, and they also um, provide concluding comments. So to move on, um, our interest in the bill, the Legal Resources Centre we were founded in 1979. We are an independent, non-profit, public interest law clinic. We do use the law as um, an instrument of justice. We have offices around South Africa, uh, with our regional office being in Johannesburg, um, Cape Town, um, Durban and Makanga. We do ensure that the principles of the Constitution are upheld and promoted. We do provide free legal services to vulnerable individual communities to ensure that they are able to assert their rights. In doing so, we do promote equitable access to urban land um, and provide education to disadvantaged communities. I have said that our submissions that we have provided were on behalf of the Poor Flat Dwellers Movement. They are a community-based organization who assists uh, poor, elderly, and marginalized communities residing in flats. Um, the, they represent the plight of many indigenous 
sectional title unit owners that um, had inherited discount benefit housing schemes. Um, so the sectional title bill in its current form, um, we do make our submission that it is interlinked, interlinked with the Schemes Management Act, which of course governs sectional title schemes. The Sectional Title Act uh, provides for the division of buildings into sections and common properties for the acquisition of separate ownership. Um, whereas the Schemes Management Act aims to provide for the establishment of body corporates to manage and regulate these sectional schemes. So although this, the amendment, the bill seeks to amend the sectional title bill, of course, our submission is that, you know, it is interlinked with the Schemes Management Act that actually provides for the management of the scheme. Um, it is our submission that the Sectional Title Act was originally intended for middle class and upper class income groups. However, from our case studies, we have seen that these types of uh, the, the Sectional Title Act is often used for discount benefit housing schemes. Um, and that is where we have seen that a number of low income households or, or sectional titles um, have been have now been converted into sectional title schemes. So, of course, in South Africa, given our growth in population coupled with the rural to urban migration, there is a need for residential accommodation that is, of course, situated close to economic hubs and city centers. And this, of course, is where sectional title schemes come into play in providing accommodation for low-income families. So the proposed amendment, and this is taken directly from the bill. Um, I'm just going to read it out for completion for this presentation. It reads that section four of the principal act is hereby amended by the substitution in subsection three for paragraph B of the following paragraph. A meeting contemplated in paragraph A1 has been held and the developer has been avail available there as to provide the particulars contemplated in the third paragraph and has answered all reasonable questions put to the developer by the lessee or the respective agents present, provided that a developer need not comply with the subsection if all such lessees have stated in writing that they are aware of their rights which shall also be set out in such statements and that they do not wish to purchase the proposed unit, which they occupy and a conveyancer has certified in writing that such statements have been received in respect of all the units in question, provided further that a share block company applying for the approval of a development scheme need not comply with the requirements of the subsection in that the share block company has within a period of two years before such application already complied with section 11A of the share block control Act 1980 of Act 59 of 1980. So the LRC, um, our comments and recommendations all stem from this proposed amendment. Um, in terms of the memorandum that were attached to the sectional title amendment bill, um, this is more of a, a simplified version um, of the clause, uh, which it just states that which deals with the approval of development schemes and provides for a developer to have a meeting with every lessee of a building in instances where part of such building is to be wholly or partially Net for residential purposes, section 43 
uh, B, provides for the developer to answer all reasonable questions of lessees that are present at such meetings. A need has been identified to also provide for lessees representatives to act on behalf of such a lessee in instances where a lessee is absent from such a meeting. So, of course, our comments have arisen from that proposed amendment. Firstly, we do welcome that the bill does need to be amended. However, our comments and submissions are that it is not adequate, that there needs to be a lot more emphasis on education and the obligation of sectional title owners. Um, also, it is our comment that the fact that it says that the developer must answer reasonable questions, we are not informed what is that level of reasonableness. What exactly are the questions that they would need to answer by the sectional type, by the proposed sectional title owners? Um, so there needs to be a great the emphasis of education and obligation on fictional title owners, they need to understand that. The lessees need to be informed of the conversion. There needs to be equitable access to all vulnerable tenants. This is especially important in respect of the issue of levies. And in the case studies, you will see that the issue of levies especially in the poor households where the low rental schemes were then converted to discount benefit housing schemes, and they are governed by sectional title as how huge or vast amounts of people have lost their households due to them firstly being unable to understand what levies are now about, unable to understand the obligations in terms of owning property in terms of sectional titles and of course often resulting in them being evicted and with this having been a discounted housing scheme that they benefited from a vast numbers of families have been left homeless. Um, so this of course is a huge challenge to access to to housing for poor families. Um, what we do submit and our comments are that in terms of the meeting with the developer, it needs to incorporate the requirements in terms of Section 3.1a of the, of the Sectional Scheme Management Act, where it sets out exactly what these levies would be used for. It sets out the amount for the insurance, the amount for the repair, the amount for the upkeep, the taxes that people would be required to pay. It also needs to set up the education that aside from those taxes, there are going to be other expenses that people will be liable for. And that's been in terms of special levies and also, of course, now with the ombudsman and there needs to be... Um, money that need to be paid towards the ombudsman fees. There also needs to be reserve levies that need to be um, maintained or, or people need to provide uh, money aside for that. So there needs to be a full education on what is required if you are going to be an owner of a sectional title scheme. Okay, um, yeah, I think I've covered this way. And I'll go into the evidence that shows that a number of indigenous people who have purchased sectional title units in terms of the discount benefit schemes um, have often stated, or, or the, the cases and communities that we've dealt with have advised us that they were not properly informed um, according to our clients, a lot of them felt that they were in fact coerced because either they become owners of the sectional titles um, and if not, then they have to move out from the low rental accommodation. So I'm going to look at 
two studies, and these were the ones that we had made within the submissions, is that a number of beneficiaries now face imminent eviction due to the inability to afford the escalating levy costs and the cost for the maintenance of the common property of the scheme. So, of course, owning a fictional title goes beyond just ensuring that your household or your unit is in working order. But uh, people need to understand that with this, and the legislation needs to make provision for this, in that it's not only your unit that you are liable for, but also there's the common property and in the recommendations, as you see, we do make some recommendations on how the sectional title legislation ought to be reformed, to be pro poor, especially if we are moving towards providing sectional title units to poor families. So the very first case that um, so, you know, the very first case uh, that the Legal Resources Center assisted the poor as well as with, but the first case that we had were uh, able to take to the Constitutional Court as, as the MT curator at the end of the court was the occupiers of urban 87 and 88. So this case centered around the duties of the judicial officer in deciding eviction matters. So in deciding the outcome of the case, the constitutional court had stated that a court will only draw an order for eviction where it has all of the information about the occupiers to enable it to decide whether the eviction is just and equitable. And only once the court has all of that information can it be satisfied that that particular eviction is just and equitable. So the role that the, that the movement had played in the constitutional court case was that they had provided the constitutional court with context and background in respect of the realities and the struggles of beneficiaries of these discount housing benefit schemes. And in the submissions and affidavits, we had placed before the court to show that there is a lack of education um, and meaningful engagement about their rights and their obligations prior to people receiving the ownership of the sectional title. Um, secondly, as we say, the budgeting capacity people are un excuse me, people are unable to afford their levy costs, and then um, there's the inability of people to actively participate and manage body corporates because this is a huge administrative obligation. And without receiving proper education, it of course leaves these body corporates vulnerable um, and open to abuse, as I will discuss in the next case. And then of course there is the owner's responsibility for maintenance and upkeep of the common property. And that, again, does tie in, you know, with the lack of education in that people, when they were, of course, renting these units, you would only be liable or accountable for your unit. Whereas now with ownership, um, you become liable for more than just your own unit. So, of course, the culmination of the above challenges um, have, sorry, the culmination of the above challenges, we have, we have, um, we submit that, you know, it is difficult for people to properly manage body corporates and what we have seen is that this has of course resulted in a number of families becoming homeless. Okay, another case that we have been involved in is the Flamingo Court. So the Flamingo Court scheme um, is based in Ambilo in Eteguini. 
Um, it's a 200 unit high rise building. It was built in 1968. It was provided by the municipality to provide low cost rental accommodation to vulnerable individuals and often indigenous families. So the decision was taken by the Etiguini municipality uh, between 1998 and 2002 to, of course, now convert. Flamingo Court into a discount benefit housing scheme. And of course, the sectional units, they were sold off a very nominal amount to our clients. And what we had discovered, the amount that they were sold off to was less than a month levied. So, yeah, so you can see that there was a decision taken by the municipality to, of course, for lack of a better word or, or phrase, probably rid themselves of these units. Um, according to our clients, there was no mean, meaningful information from the municipality or any state organ notifying the new owners that maintenance of the structure including all common property was also being transferred to them. They were not informed of the obligations arising in, in respect of the sectional title act or of the role that they would now have to play as being members of a body corporate because they were, of course, now, in fact, the owners of the sectional title unit. Annaline, you have five minutes remaining. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So very quickly, what has happened is Flamingo Court became dysfunctional. Um, it was placed under administration. Um, the matter had gone to court where the administrator was challenged. And what we had seen is that um, the court um, had decided that the administrator was abusing their power and that they had now dismissed the administrator from acting in Flamingo, from acting as the administrator, sorry. Uh, oh, yes. And what the court had then done is they had placed power back within the body corporate where the the uh, owners were then able to have meetings um, and the court had taken the decision that, you know, for the section of title scheme to remain financially viable, um, that the owners needed to be involved. Um, and then just to move on very quickly, given my limited time in respect of our recommendations that we do make Sectional title schemes, the legislative framework in its current form requires reform. This is illustrated in respect of the challenges that are experienced by the beneficiaries of the discount housing scheme. Um, and there needs to be safeguards in place to ensure that vulnerable groups are provided with adequate protection in terms of sectional title legislative act. And then very importantly, I've, I've highlighted the importance of education. What they need to be before these low cost rental houses are, are converted to um, discount benefit schemes or, or sectional units that are to be used by families that are indigenous or, or low income families, there must be an affordability test before any title can be passed to the families, um, very important in terms of the affordability affordability test. If a family does not pass that, then there ought to be a sort of subsidized um, levy that gets paid. Uh, and this is for the upkeep of the common property. Where the family does not pass the affordability test, um, we submit that those households remain low income rental properties. Um, another important recommendation that we do make is that 
there needs to be an effective enforcement of of the financial and other obligations. Um, in terms, there needs to be the education. We also, uh, as set out here, we recommend that developers pass with the housing the, uh, delivery, the Department of Human Settlements, the municipalities. There needs to be a budget identified for this meaningful transfer of information to ensure that beneficiaries, the, that their tenure is not later threatened. Um, let me just see. Oh, yes, another important one is that the installation of water meters. This needs to be an expense that is taken on either by the province or the municipalities because what we've seen in these discount schemes is that that expense often falls on body corporates, whereas it ought to be an expense or or you know, paying your water account, you ought to pay it directly to the municipality where you could apply for some sort of subsidy. Um, yeah, and of course, inclusionary housing, there needs to be the safeguards in place. Um, and very quickly, I'm hoping I'm still within my five minutes. The sectional title scheme, in conclusion, um, in its current form, it requires reform. Um, what we have seen and what I hope I have highlighted is the difficulties that beneficiaries in the discount housing schemes often face. Um, the lack of education um, and, and training is, is reckless. And what we have seen is we've seen number of families, uh, being, uh, indigenous families being left homeless without able to benefit again. Um, there needs to be proper education of body corporate members in order to ensure that their affairs are best run, and this needs to be a top priority. Another thing is before these titles are used for low-cost housing, there must be an affordability test because what would be the use of handing over homes where people cannot afford to, to, to live in it? Um, yeah, another thing in terms of the subsidized levies, I do know that there's a movement for inclusionary housing where homes would be provided to middle income earners um, at a more affordable rate. But again, the levies, there needs to be consideration for subsidized levies. Very quickly, I'm done. I'm just going to hand over to my colleague, Sharita, hopefully to just sum up what I may have missed. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Anilin. Um, Sharita, we've run out of time. Perhaps you can uh, pick up uh, on the questions uh, from the honorable members, and you can then give input and further clarity in that regard. Honorable members, there's uh, the presentation uh, and uh, submission by the Legal Resource Center, uh, which was put to us uh, by uh, the regional director, Sharita and Anneline. Uh, I would therefore open this session for questions and we'll take uh, uh, responses after the questions from uh, both uh, Sharita and Anneline. Any hands, honorable members, if you may raise your hands so I can see who's uh, uh, wanting to have the first bite. Honorable Clapper. Chair, I'm good for now. You are covered. Honorable uh, Mamun Babama. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you very much to LRC for a very uh, thorough presentation. I tend to agree with them in a couple of points, especially around the consumer education. And in my mind, um, this bill lacks in actually looking at the, you know, the, the vulnerable groups. And I am just worried that it is more of copy paste from what from the legislation that is already there. I think what would have been um, great is 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 for um, 
you know, the people who actually are amending this to have spoken to groups like these beforehand and find out, should we really be including the vulnerable groups under this act? Because there are so many hidden costs to this to, to, to a sectional title that people are not aware of. And as they say, they end up being in trouble and then have to be evicted, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I agree 100% with the LRC. And I really feel that um, there, there needs to be a lot of consumer education and also subsidies in terms of the hidden costs. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mamun Babama. Uh, Honorable uh, Mema Shachi. Thank you very much, Chairperson. I do not have any questions or any comments. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mashaji. Honorable uh, Mestain. Chairperson, thank you. Now I'm covered. Thank you, Chair. You are covered. Uh, Honorable Dabezita. In course, you have a call. Thank you, Chairperson. I don't think I have a question except that uh, one would look, you will be looking forward to see maybe this bill uh, 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 at a later stage being passed in order to uh, protect the exploitation by uh, those who have man and powers and, 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 and legal uh, services to to exploit the, the, the people who are in this uh, 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 these high right buildings, Chairperson. Thank you. Osinda Bezita, the Honorable Ntatemasipa. Thanks, Chair, and uh, thanks to the uh, um, LRC. Uh, Chair, my question is uh, to the LRC is um, obviously education will come with costs and obviously the budgeting capacity and all those uh, areas that they are recommending. Uh, the question for me is that who uh, do they think uh, that must be uh, responsible to bear the cost in terms of of managing uh, this processes because uh, I'm sure it's going to come at a very, very high cost. Thanks very much. Thank you, Honorable Ntate Masipa. Any uh, further questions of clarity, Honorable Members? The Honorable Memato, are you there? Honorable Chair, yes, I'm here, and thank you very much. Um, I have no question. I think uh, the presentation was well done. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions of clarity, honorable members? Thank you. Let me uh, also hop on to it and uh, see uh, if I can... Say, yes. Uh, let me voice my also... Uh, Understanding that I don't have any questions, I'm covered. Yeah, covered, uh, Mount Yes. Oh, hi then. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I wonder why. How did you forget me, uh, you, you see, uh, Mount I, I tend to see two coppers on the platform, and I over uh, had an oversight on you. But I think uh, uh, I must be alert that uh, you are on the platform. <laughs> no, let me uh, sponsor a question or two uh, from the presentation. And also let me uh, uh, welcome uh, the input made uh, by Sharita and Annelin. Uh, but uh, on, uh, from the Legal uh, Resource Center. There seems, honorable members, to be an interlink between sectional title act and sectional title scheme legislation. You may raise many issues that require this committee to look at. 
One, do you think that these issues can be addressed in this legislation or should they be addressed in the sectional title schemes legislation? The second, uh, if they are to be addressed in this legislation, may you make specific proposals on the clauses that will require the committee's attention uh, and uh, the possible text in that effect. Thank you. We'll hand over back to the Legal Resource Center. Sharita, you may lead us. Um, thank you, Nkosi Zweli Salile. Um, I want to address, first of all, the question raised by uh, Mr. Noko Phineas Masipa um, relating to um, the responsibility for the costs of education um, of beneficiaries of um, a pro poor housing and affordable housing. And um, <clears throat> it is early in the morning, but I don't think that that will enable me to shy away from answering this as um, honestly as it would require it to be answered. And, and that is that this responsibility has to fall on the state. Um, it will depend on which state organ or department should bear this. But any legislation prior to it being passed or enacted has to have a financial impact done off it. And if the purpose of legislation is to comply with the Constitution to advance the equitable access to housing and for security of tenure, because access to housing is meaningless without security of tenure, uh, as we are finding over the last 27 years, so I would say that the responsibility for education um, in respect of the intended beneficiaries must fall on the state and it must be costed out prior to the commencement of law. And there are many organizations um, internationally, regionally and domestically that advocate for this as well. And I would go so far as to say that um, Documented, documented reports, audit reports demonstrate how failures in uh, poor construction and corruption in housing um, is money that is ill spent and drawn away from beneficiaries. And therefore, if that could be managed more efficiently, perhaps we wouldn't have intended beneficiaries being rendered homeless after the state has gone out of its way to assist them merely because they didn't understand the obligations of sectional title schemes. Um, with regard to the second question in Kursi, is um, whether this specific bill addresses the concerns that the NRC raises and wider questions about equitable access and security of tenure. The NRC's views is that um, NRC view or recommendation is that we can't tinker with piecemeal legislation if we want to give effect to equitable access to housing. Ownership of homes, individual ownership, is very important to the majority of South Africans because they were deprived of this privilege during apartheid. And therefore, housing legislation and policy has to cohere in a manner that gives substance and effect to that objective of the government. So it's difficult for you. In fact, we had that difficulty when we are preparing our submissions to this um, bill. And internally at the NRC, we said, but this is like piecemeal. What do we say here? And how will it, uh, um, how will it, uh, be relevant to what the other policies are saying. And therefore, our overall recommendation would be that over the next five to 10 years, that thought be given on how all legislation may apply in a consistent manner to give effect for the majority of South Africans. There are two further aspects that I wish to draw attention to. And one is that it would appear that the state supports 
the outsourcing of key management functions. And as uh, the Honorable Kandeka Mabambama noted, there are invisible costs that this legislation presents for people that are affected or who are uh, struggling to um, secure tenure and equitable access. And the scheme management functions being outsourced is one of those invisible costs. The other is the cost of appointing administrators to allegedly dysfunctional uh, schemes. And that comes at an exorbitant cost. And as the LRC, we would like to inquire whether those costs are being monitored to check or demonstrate whether it actually serves the interests of the owners or lessees that are affected by those appointments. Because our data is that it's not and that it's not monitored. And that's one of the reasons why the syndicates operate that can actually buy houses in these discount benefit schemes that lead to the eviction of poor people. So I'm just going to stop over there. And I thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you, uh, Sharita. Anilin, any further input you wanna make? Thank you, Chair. Just to include that, in terms of the Sectional Titles Act, it does deal with the establishment of sectional, uh, sorry, the establishment of the body corporate, and that is particularly found in Part 8 of the Sectional Titles Act, because I know Chair had wanted me to refer him to a specific section in the Sectional Titles Act. So that's just my um, a small input. Thank you. Thank you, Anneline. Uh, honorable members, any uh, further input, uh, follow-up questions you may have? No further follow-up questions to the uh, Legal Resource Center. We will uh, now proceed, honorable members, to our uh, next presentation. Um, which uh, will be from uh, the Law Society of South Africa. Let us uh, take therefore the opportunity in inviting uh, Mr. Hussan Koka to uh, present or make the submission from the Law Society of South Africa. Mr. Hassan. Anyone from the Law Society of South Africa on the platform? Good morning, Chair. It's, it's my pleasure here at the PLO. Mr. Hussain is muted. Come again. My name is Lorita Kachanza. I'm the PLO for the Law Society of South Africa. I can see that Mr. Hussain is on the platform. He was muted, so he's just unmuted himself. Hussain, uh, can you hear us? Yes, indeed. Thank you. You have the platform. You may present. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, a very good morning to honorable members and greetings to all the members. Thank you for giving us the opportunity Mr. to... Sorry to disturb you. Can you shift the camera slightly so that you are in the center? Uh, yeah. That's perfect. Okay. okay. Chair, thank you for the, for the opportunity. My name is Hassan Goga. I represent the Law Society of South Africa. Just some background about the Law Society of South Africa. 
The Law Society of South Africa is a representative body of attorneys in South Africa. It is a voluntary organization and its constituent members of the Black Lawyers Association, referred to as BLA, the National Association of Democratic Lawyers, NADEL, and nine provincial attorney associations. The Law Society of South Africa constitutes the collective voice of approximately 30,000 attorneys within the Republic. The LSSA was established in 1998 with six constituent members, the BLA, NADEL, and four statutory provincial societies. On 1 November 2018, the Legal Practice Act came into operation, abolishing the statutory provincial law societies and replacing them with the Legal Practice Council, which is now the regulatory body of all legal practitioners. In 2018, the Law Society of South Africa changed its constitution to represent the attorney's profession and safeguard the rule of law via efficient and fair administration of justice. The LSSA has various specialist com committees, including the Property Law Committee, comprising practicing attorneys who are experts in various fields. It also has a very strong legal education arm, Legal Education and Development, commonly known as LEAD, and is the publisher of the attorney's journal, which is called the De Rebus. Um, Chair and uh, honorable members, I just as a matter of introduction as well, I've been a member of the Sectional Titles Regulation Board and the Deeds Registries Regulation Board for a number of years. I've also been a member of the Specialist Committee of the Property Law Committee of South Africa for a number of years. Uh, I'll now proceed to, to present the submission. Clause one, uh, the law LSSA does not support the proposed amendment in clause 1A of the bill. It will cause uncertainty and create confusion a definition by its very nature should be precise and not speculative. What are occupant or occupants thereof recognized by law as contemplated in the Act? Will unlawful occupiers also be considered as occupants? There is simply no relationship between the meaning of exclusive use area and occupant or occupants. The lawfulness or otherwise of occupation of an exclusive use area is a matter of law. Uh, it is it's therefore submitted that the definition of exclusive use area should not be amended and it should remain as means part or parts of the common property for the exclusive use area by the owner or owners of one or more sections. The ownership of the section is fundamental to, 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 to an exclusive use area. On that basis, that proposed amendment is therefore not supported. Continuing with the further submission, I think we can group clauses eight, nine, and 10 together because the basis uh, of the, uh, the basis is the same on why the proposed uh, amendment is not supported. In clause eight uh, and nine, it is submitted that the legislation as it stands is sufficiently wide enough to allow an owner to do the things referred to in the act. I don't, we don't believe that the, we, we don't believe and respectfully submit that it is not necessary to amend the act to give the, the owner the power to do those acts. An owner has the, uh, has the authority to open a sectional title register. There's no reason why the owner has no authority prior to the establishment of a body corporate to do a subdivision of a section or a consolidation of a section. Therefore, on that basis, clauses, clauses eight, nine, and 10, those proposed amendments are, are not supported. Just as a, just 
to, to, to refer to clause eight, this is referred to in section 21 of the act. It says approval of plan of subdivision or consolidation by surveyor general. If an owner of the section proposes to subdivide his or her section or to consolidate two or more sections registered in his or her name, he or she shall, with the consent of the trustees of the body corporate, which consent shall not unreasonably withheld, cause the land surveyor or architect concerned to submit the draft sectional plan of subdivision or consolidation, as the case may be, to the surveyor general for approval. Our understanding is that if there is a body corporate has not been established, then obviously there is no need to, to, to procure the consent of a body corporate. The owner it has sufficient authority uh, to obtain approval of the subdivision or consolidation. Moving on uh, to, to clause 16, Uh, the proposed substitution in subsection 2C from seven to nine members is not supported. The, the management of sectional title schemes now falls under the purview of the Sectional Title Scheme Management Act and no longer the scheme, Sectional Titles Act, which primarily deals with registration issues. The composition of the regulations board should be decreased instead of being increased, especially in view of cost constraints. State resources must be used, utilized efficiently. I'm aware from previous and personal experience that many members, many persons who are members of the sectional titles regulation board attended meetings without making any constructive contribution and at great expense, especially flight fares were quite exorbitant. It's respectfully submitted that the board should comprise of the Chief Register of Deeds, the Chief Surveyor General, two practicing conveyances uh, nominated by the Law Society of South Africa, and if that's, if that's not possible by the Legal Practice Council, a professional land surveyor, it, a register of deeds, deputy register of deeds, stroke assistant register of deeds, and an official from the Department of Rural Development and Land Reform. The board should therefore comprise of seven members in total, i.e. the chief register of deeds, the chief surveyor general, and five other members. I believe the, the proposal at the moment to have altogether 11 members, uh, they are too many members. That, that's applied for. That deals with the clause 16. Then we're going to clause 18. This is the proposed amendment in section, section 60, the amendment of section 60 by the substitution of subsection 3 by the proposed subsection 3 A and B. It's not supported. The owner has the right to take transfer of the exclusive use area by, by the registration of a notarial deed. It was never contemplated that the delineation of an exclusive use area on the sectional plan would be a prerequisite for the transfer. It may very well be that the exclusive use area can be transferred or ceded where it's not delineated on a sectional plan, but it's done by description. I believe that that is possible. I also believe that Section 60 has certain entrenched rights, and these rights should not be taken away. If, the, if it was necessary for, a sex, for, for, for the exclusive use area to be delineated on a sexual plan, the previous legislation should have indicated that. It was never, it, it was never within their contemplation that that exclusive use area should be delineated on a sectional plan. The, the right that accrued to the owner is established in law, and it may not be lawful to circumvent such right by imposing an additional obligation that never existed. Then I'm proceeding to an item on the general amendment of, of section 246A. Uh, the, 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 the extract of, 
of items 5.6 and 5.7 of the minutes of the sectional title regulation board meeting held on the 24th November is attached to the submission. The amendment of section 24.6a is of crucial importance and is arguably more important than any of the proposed amendments in the bill. There are sound reasons for the proposed amendment and is accordingly submitted the section 24.6a be amended along the lines set out in the resolution. I'm gonna to go to the resolution very quickly. That's to be found on page four of the minutes. And I'll just read this through very quickly. Uh, that's at paragraph five, section 24.6d1 and 6a. This is by an attorney in Durban. The submission was made by Roger Green. It's proposed that the percentage in subsection 24.6 and 6a be increased from 10% to 20%. If authorized by special resolution passed in terms of 518 of the Sectional Schemes Management Act, a body corporate must approve an extension of boundaries of floor area. Accordingly, any extension of the section so authorized is un unlikely to be prejudicial to a mortgagee. Nevertheless, consent by the mortgagee is furnished. The extension of a section is even more unlikely to affect mortgages of other sections, particularly in a multi-unit scheme or a scheme in which units are freestanding. Even though the extension of a section may have no impact on mortgages on receipt of the notice referred to in section 24.6a, a mortgagee generally requires copies of the sectional plans of extension and may instruct conveyances to advise on whether the proposed extension will affect the security of the mortgagee. The above results in extra costs for the owner because the bank may require fees to be paid and also the fees of the conveyancer in large schemes, the cost could be prohibitive. In a small residential unit, the addition of a garage easily can result in a deviation of more than 10%. However, the addition has no impact on other mortgages in the scheme. What sometimes happens is that the body corporate authorizes an extension, the section is extended and the sectional plan of extension drawn and approved by the surveyor general, the owner is then faced with the logistical difficulty of ascertaining the names and contact details and loan amount num account numbers of the mortgages. In a 100-unit scheme, this can take time. The owner then abandons the attempt to register the extension in the deeds office. Because of the expense, the trustee of the body corporate are reluctant to compel the owner to proceed with registration. G, G, reducing the requirement by giving notice to all mortgages will enhance compliance with section 24.6. Then there's the, the issue of 24.6a, which is referred to in, in paragraph 5.7. The motivation to increase the deviation from 10% to 20% is set out in the submission of R. Green. It is generally not possible for a mortgagee to obtain reference numbers of mortgage loans passed over other sections in the sectional scheme. It is practiced to serve documents on entities or financial institutions at their registered office or their principal place of business. It should be permissible to send notices by electronic mail. The delivery of notices by, by registered post is no longer a preferred method to serve notices. The 30-day period is too long and should be reduced to 21 days. The Sexual Titles Regulation Board took the following resolution in pursuance of these submissions. The board resolved that section 24.6a be amended as follows. The applicant must, if there's a deviation of more than 10, it's to be increased to 20%. As a result of the extent, send a notice by registered post or electronic mail to facilitate delivery of the notices to each mortgagee or where the mortgagee is a financial institution to its head office or principal place of business, giving details of the mortgage bond, the name and identity of so registration number of the mortgage or and the reference number of the mortgage loan, if available, because the mortgage loan is a is 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 is, is a fact which is only known to the more to the mortgage or and to the mortgage. It's not known to third parties. The proposed extension of the section in relation to size and location 
and the impact of the security of such mortgagee as to the diminution of the participation quota allocated to the mortgage unit. Provided that if a response to the notice is not received by the applicant within 21 days, this is a change from 30 days, of the date of posting of the notice by registered post or from the date on which the notice was transmitted electronically, as the case may be, it shall be deemed that the mortgagee does not have any objection to the proposed extension and the mortgagee consents thereto. Uh, this resolution was passed. It's, it's very urgent for this to be incorporated in the, amend, in the amending bill because many of the schemes, the extensions of schemes by additions of sec, by the addition or extension of the section is being frustrated because where the deviation exceeds 10%, uh, various other formalities have to be complied with. Notices have to be given to every mortgagee. This is costly and it's expensive and it doesn't serve uh, uh, the needs of the people and doesn't serve uh, housing. Uh, it, 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 the bureaucracy to do this has to be removed so that people can get along with their lives and extend premises if they need to. That That's the presentation, uh, honorable members. Thank you. Uh, for the presentation, uh, Mr. Hassan Koga. Uh, any other further input uh, from the Law Society? That's all. Honorable members, there you have hit the uh, submission from the uh, Legal Society. Uh, any questions for clarity? Honorable Kape. Chair, I, I will not have a question, but um, I think listening to this uh, Hassan's presentation, I agree with uh, the sentiment earlier on made by honorable members that awareness and education will be very important. Or for our people, especially the vulnerable groups, because whether we like it or not, this uh, bill has a way of affecting them and they would need to be conversant with all these amendments. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Kape. Honorable Luma Mustain. Um. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, I was also listening um, and agreeing that I think we need to be sure that the two bills dealing with the sectional titles um, are, are very, um, my, people are made aware exactly. I don't know whose role that is going to be, but I I, um, I don't have any questions, Chair. I just think um, ourselves as a committee needs to think very carefully um, on maybe going forward, how to ensure that we make people aware of the impacts of the ball. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Uma Mustain. Uh, are you with us? No, nothing from that. Uh, Honorable Memasho. Honorable Chair, I, I am definitely covered. Thank the you. The presentation was well presented, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any uh, further questions of clarity, Honorable Members? Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, nothing from me. Nothing on your side. Davizi Ta Inkosemkov, the Honorable Kabekulu. Thank you, Chair. No question at the moment. Okay. The Honorable Mautapa. 
Teguche, I'm, I'm, I'm covered also. I would also uh, re-emphasize on the need for this awareness, especially on the beneficiaries. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Ubaukapa. The Honorable Ntate Masipa. Uh, thank you, Chair. I have just one question, Chair. Um, I note that the Law Society is um, against having the architect being represented on the council, as well as uh, BASA Banking Association of South Africa. I just want to get um, a view from their side. What what are their reasons for that? Because because I think that you know banking play quite a crucial role in terms of uh, banking this. Um, um, Mortgages as such. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Ntate Masipa. Uh, Honorable Me uh, Mashati. Thank you very much, Chair. I think I'm covered by um by colleagues. Thank you very much. Any other uh, honorable member who wishes to pose a question? That day, Hassan Koga, it seems that uh, you've paralyzed the honorable members. <laughs> you certainly covered everything. And on my side as the chair, it would be interesting to hear the response uh, from the department as to the proposal and the submission uh, you have uh, put to the committee. And we will look forward to hearing from the department uh, regarding your submission. But let us uh, uh, get a response on the Honorable Masipa's question. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the, 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 the reason I, I think that the Banking Council and an architect were not members of the, of the regulations board is uh, the Banking Council has a very limited interest because the Sexual Titles Act deals with the registration issues, right? And they can, they, the, the, the view was taken that they will be invited to make input on mortgages, et cetera, that affects them. But for, for, for largely when they're at the meeting, they make no contribution because these are largely registration issues. As far as architects are concerned, generally the, the, the sexual plans are done by land surveyors. And therefore the land surveyor is a member of, this, of the regulations board because it's more within the uh, terrain. Architects may be, some architects are licensed to, to, to sectional plans, but by and large, it's a field of the land surveyor. I think that's the reason. No, thank you, Dr. Uh, Hassan Koga. So the, there's one other issue that I just want yes. to just briefly talk about with your permission, sir. Please is go that, ahead. Is that education is critical for the well-functioning of any body corporate. Most of the body corporates in Phoenix, in Chatsworth, which I've got tremendous experience with, they are dysfunctional. And they're dysfunctional because there has not been proper education. And for instance, if you take a body corporate, uh, the financials need to be done uh, to be audited, which is an absurd proposition. How can you expect an audit to be done of a body corporate where the parties and the participants, the owners, are indigent. I mean, it's it's, it's mind-boggling. Right? So I don't believe that, that the Sectional Titles Act is the proper forum for this because Sectional Titles Act deals with registration issues. This was the very reason why we've now got the Sectional Titles Scheme Management Act, which deals with management and regulatory issues and conduct issues and if greater emphasis can be placed on that for purposes of education, we will all be better off. 
also there is the problem, just as as as, as an example, is that the hundreds of transfers which cannot be registered in Etiquini on low-cost sectional titles, because managing agents want an arm and a leg for a levy clearance certificate. The municipality can't, doesn't have the funds to pay for the levy certificate. And the, 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 the transferees don't have the funds. If we're doing the, the transfers at 600 rand or 1,000 rand, the entire registration, you have a managing agent wants to charge 1,500, 2,000 rand for, an, for, 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 a, for a levy clearance certificate. It really creates a problem. The file just lie. There's no, no movement in it, and people become restless because they're not getting their title deeds. So that's, that's, that's also part of the education, and I think that's a focus in order to have expeditious transfers and clean, good, cost-effective management of these body corporates. And I think that will go a long way in resolving many of the problems experienced. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ndate uh, Hassan Koka, for the presentation and the submission uh, from the Law Society of South Africa. And uh, we do look forward to further engagement, as I said, uh, particularly the response uh, to your submission from the department. Honorable members, uh, let us therefore uh, thank you, the Law Society, and move on to our next and last submission uh, made, uh, which uh, will be actual responses uh, and uh, it's the responses that uh, we'll have from the Department of Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development. Uh, I see the hand of Honorable Stain is up. Is there anything you wanted to uh, put, Honorable Stain? Yes, Chairperson, I'm sorry. Um, Chair, I was reminded now when, when uh, the last member spoke. Um, as far as I know, we're going to get the Zeets Amendment Bill um, also in front of this committee. Um, and I want to know, I know that it is, you know, not what we are dealing with today, but if they're not something that when we deal with that, we can combine with what was the discussion today. Um, I, all of this of, of transfers and, and title deeds and all of it, it feels to me like we are, you know, again, adding different pieces of legislation working on different sides. Um, I, I just wanted to find out if there is no way that when we deal with the deeds amendment bill, if there's not something that we maybe can do that assist us in the discussion today, although, you know, it might not help us today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Stein. We will note that and I will uh, request the Secretariat uh, to look into that and see as to how we can plan accordingly uh, so that uh, we can have uh, uh, that uh, attended to in the same uh, uh, period. Let us uh, proceed, therefore, Honorable Members, with uh, the response from the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development on the oral and written public comments which were made on the sectional titles amendment bill. I will hand over to uh, the acting DG Dade Ramasodi and the officials of the department to take us through the presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Um, also a word of welcome to Honorable Deputy Minister Kappa, who's also on the platform. 
Um, Chairperson, we would like to appreciate the inputs that have been made by the Legal Resource Center and also the Law Society of South Africa. We have present, um, uh, just prepared a presentation um, as a response in terms of those um, written re uh, responses that they have given. I've also noted that there were a few additional points that were made, um, which we will also respond to. Leading the presentation today, uh, Honorable Chair, would be Mayor Antoinette Reynolds, who will take us through the presentation. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, um, um, Acting DG Ramasori, Honorable Minister Kappa, um, Chairperson and members of the committee. Uh, the department did um, draft a presentation. I saw it was flagged a minute ago. I wonder if the secretary can just flag the presentation for us again, because uh, the department dealt with all the uh, comment and the presentation. Um, if it cannot be flagged, I can perhaps flag it from my side. The presentation was uh, put uh, up, uh, so can I request uh, whoever uh, put and shared the document to continue? Ralph, are you on the platform? Uh, um, otherwise, I can share it from my side. Uh, Mayor Reynolds, it is being currently shared. I can see it on my screen. You may proceed. Right. Um, sorry, it disappeared again. Can Rolf just share it again, please? Thanks, uh, Rolf. If we can just go to the um, slide number two. Um, Thanks. If you can just put it on the, on the big screen there. Um, 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 I just would like to say that we received a comment from the Law Society of South Africa, as presented by Mr. Goga this morning. Then we also received comment from the Western Cape government, uh, the Legal Resource Center, as presented this morning. And there were um, a number of members of the general public that also uh, commented um, on the bill. Now, to start with um, uh, the presentation and that was also given by Mr. Goga this morning, it related to the amendment of the definition of exclusive use area. Now, the department does not share um, um, the view of the Law Society of South Africa, as we do think that it is indeed necessary um, for uh, the current wording of the definition of exclusive use area to be amended. Currently, the definition only makes a reference to exclusive use by the owner, by only by the owner of one or more sections in an exclusive, in a, in a sectional title scheme. Now, by including an occupant that is recognized by law in the definition, provision is being made uh, for persons who legally occupies the units, for instance, your tenants, spouses of the registered owner and other family members to also make use and to access these exclusive use areas. So the department therefore believes that there is indeed a relationship between the meaning of exclusive use area and occupant or occupants. Then we can also mention um, that um, in 2010, section 27 of the act that deals with exclusive use areas were um, amended to provide for an owner or a holder of an exclusive use area to also register lease agreements um, and other um, um, uh, personal servitudes over exclusive use areas. And the purpose of that amendment was to ensure that lessees and holders of other real rights um, have the right to uh, use those areas. Now, although the amendment of 27 6 um, therefore now provides for registration of leases um, over exclusive use areas, only your owner, um, in, in view of the current wording of the um, definition, may use um, those areas. So we therefore think that the definition needs to be amended to make it clear 
that a person that legally occupies the unit um, may um, use the exclusive use areas. Uh, if we can please go to the next slide. Now, I'll also, uh, like Mr. Goga, just deal with the next three slides that's uh, dealing with Clause 8, um, Clause 9 and 10 um, of the Act. And now, these um, um, clauses deal with the amendment of Section 21, 22, and 23 of the Act. And these sections specifically deals with the um, lodgement and the approval of uh, a plan of a subdivision or sectional plan of consolidation or a sectional plan of extension of a section by a land surveyor or an architect with a surveyor general for um, approval. Now, uh, the Law Society says that prior to um, the establishment of a body corporate, the developer is the owner of all the sections and they therefore do not support um, the amendment. Now, the department does not share the views of the Law Society in this um, regard. Um, although a developer prior to the establishment of a body corporate is regarded as the owner of all the sections in the section or title scheme, as per um, 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 uh, the provisions of section 34 of the Act, the rights relating to a consolidation, a subdivision, or an extension of a section and to extend the common property of a section can only be exercised by owners after the establishment of a body corporate, since the body corporate um, uh, consent is a legislative requirement, and it is a, re a requirement as per the provisions of Section 7.2 of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act. Now, registrars of deeds, um, however, they do currently allow the developers to, prior to establishment of the body corporate, to indeed to register those transactions but this is only due to the established practice over time, which treated these rights um, of developers as common law rights. However, these are not common law rights, but it is statutory right. And the amendment is therefore necessary in order um, to um, create that um, uh, statutory right for uh, developers. Now, also in allowing a developer to prior to, um, to extend the section prior to the establishment of a body corporate, uh, may deprive purchases of other sections who have not yet received transfer thereof in receiving a percentage in the common property um, that they purchased at the time. The extension of a scheme by a developer will therefore decrease the share in the common property of other sections. If you, for example, um, if you... Um, um, uh, purchases a unit in a sectional title scheme. And prior to receiving transfer of that uh, um, registration of that unit into your name, it may be that a developer extends a section over the common property um, and, and that that extension is registered prior to you taking transfer of, um, of, um, uh, of that unit into your name. And this um, will mean that uh, you receive a decreased share in the common property in comparison to the date of which you would have signed um, that agreement to purchase um, um, uh, that unit in, the, in this uh, uh, sectional title scheme. So if we can just go over to the, the next slide, please, um, Rolf. Well, the next slide is clause nine, um, which we just dealt with. And um, Rolf, please. And slide five also deals with the amendment to section 23 that we actually also dealt with. So if we can go over to slide number six, please, Rolf. Slide um, we've dealt with that one. Uh, we've dealt, yes, if we can stop at uh, slide six. Okay, now uh, the Law Society also commented on the amendment of Section 54 of the Act. Now, Section 54 deals with the, um, with the establishment of um, the, the Sectional Titles Regulation Board. Now, the board currently, if we look at the right-hand side column there, the department's response, the 
current board, or the board as it currently consists of seven members, um, that is now, of course, of your chief registrar of deeds uh, is the chairperson. Then you have the chief surveyor general. Um, and then there is currently one conveyancer nominated by the Legal Practice Council. There's one land surveyor nominated by the relevant land surveying council. There's one architect nominated by the relevant uh, architectural council. Then there's one officer of the, in the employer of the Banking Association of South Africa. Then there's two persons having special knowledge um, um, of sectional title development schemes. And then there's also an official, an official of the department that is normally nominated by the director general of the, the um, department. Now, the proposed amendment in clause 16 of the bill um, provides for an additional conveyancer nominated by the law society, as well as an official appointed in terms of section two of the Deeds Registries Act. And that official will be um, either the registrar of deeds or a deputy or an assistant registrar of deeds. Now, the law society in the last bullet there um, under their comment they do support those amendments of the additional uh, conveyancer and the, uh, the registrar of deeds. Now, the comment by the Law Society to remove the two persons having special knowledge of sectional title schemes um, is supported uh, by the department in view of the establishment of the sectional title schemes man um, management advisory council there is this um, the sectional title management advisory council that is established in terms of section 18 of the sectional title schemes management act and, and they uh, deal with your managerial and consumer related um, issues and sectional title schemes so the words and uh, section 54.2c which is bolted there um, under uh, paragraph uh, 5 that makes reference to two persons having special knowledge of sectional title schemes we do support the law society and we agree that um, that um, my, uh, section may be omitted from the act. However, the department does not agree with the proposed configuration of the board by the law society. In so far, it um, relates to the um, um, doing away with an architect um, that represents the relevant architectural council, as well as the official from the Banking Association of South Africa. We do indeed need, um, um, or we have the opinion that their um, knowledge, um, uh, is, is, uh, specialized knowledge is indeed needed in, um, in, on the board. Um, we think here yeah, of the involvement of your um, uh, BASA members, the Banking Association, and in the development schemes, the huge um, mortgage bonds that are registered. So they do really have a financial interest there. Uh, and if we also just think of the provisions of Section 5 and Section 6 of the Sectional Titles Act that deals with um, a draft sectional plans, and the Act specifically also provides not only for a land surveyor, but also for an architect to draft sectional plans. So therefore, um, we do, um, uh, um, uh, um, you know, representation of an architect um, as represented by the relevant architectural council is indeed necessary. Um, on the board. So if the membership stays then and, and we do away with those two uh, persons having special knowledge on sectional titles um, um, development schemes, and we add the one conveyance and we add the register of deeds, your um, um, membership will remain at seven members and it will therefore then not um, increase to nine members as mentioned by the Law Society. Um, if we can perhaps go over to the next slide, please, Rolf. Okay, now the comment by the Law Society here relates to um, the amendment to Section 60 of the Act. Uh, section 60 deals with the savings and the transitional provisions um, um, from the 1971 Sectional Titles Act to the 1986 um, Sectional Titles Act. And the Law Society um, uh, might comment on the delineation of exclusive use areas on sectional plans and said that um, uh, it was never contemplated for this delineation to be a prerequisite um, for the transfer thereof. Now, 
that the department agrees with this statement. Um, the reason, the actual reason for the proposed amendment was based on the principle that exclusive use areas must be created on sectional plans. However, uh, given the fact that exclusive use areas uh, contemplated by section 60 of the act was created and recognized under the 1971 act, and it is still being recognized today under the 1986 uh, act and, and section 60 of the current act, the imposition of these um, additional obligations may well not uh, be lawful. So the department agrees that the amendment in clause 18 of the bill may uh, be permitted. Um, Rolf, if we can please go over to the next slide. Now, um, um, the next slide deals with the general comment by the Law Society of South Africa, uh, which relates to the amendment of Section 24 of the Act. Now, Section 24 of the Act deals with the extension of sections, and Section 24.6 specifically deals with the deviations as a result of extensions of sections and it provides then for certain notices to be delivered to um, uh, um, uh, your uh, uh, financial institutions and your mortgages. Now, um, the bill as it currently um, stands contains proposed amendments um, by the sectional titles regulation board from meetings that took place from uh, 2012 up to 2016. Now, the amendment of 24.6 has included currently an, a, a further sectional titles amendment bill that is currently being drafted and that must still be published for a public comment. Now, the board sits annually and it makes um, proposals and um, um, the board, uh, we, Parliament cannot go to Parliament. As you know, we can't go to Parliament every year. So we club some of the proposals together and then we go um, with the bills uh, to Parliament. Now, this specific bill was targeted to go to Parliament in 2018, but it was not at that stage in 2018 regarded by Parliament as a high priority bill. Um, and it was then removed from the legislative programme and it was placed on the 2020 programme. And we now at the stage of then, of course, going um, through the processes of having the bill uh, promulgated um, um, and enacted. But um, what I also wanted to mention is Mr. Goga read um, extracts from item 5.6 and item 5.7 of the minutes. But um, if I've got the minutes with me as well, but um, Mr. Goga omitted to um, write at the end of the resolution an item uh, 5.7. Um, there is a bullet that says the Banking Association reserves its right to refer this matter back again to the board for further discussion. So the Banking Association was not in total agreement with the amendment at that stage, and it indeed did take the amendment of section 24.6 back to the board and the 2018 board meeting, and the section was further amended then to provide for, um, let me just read it uh, quickly, uh, uh, section 24.6, to be further amended to also provide for a sectional mortgage bond to which the section may be subject together with the consent of the mortgagee, the financial institution of the section, to be extended out of the exclusive use area. So the uh, BASA, the banking association who sat on the board, wanted um, the consent of the financial institutions to also be lodged with the extension. So these amendments are to section 24.6 are indeed important and they are contained in a further amendment bill that will be published for public comment. Uh, Rolf, if we can maybe go over to the next um, slide. Now, um, the, um, this slide was um, uh, deals with comment that was made by the Western Cape province. Um, they made general comment with regard to the language and and drafting errors, um, they say. Um, and they say to improve the text, it's recommended that the legislative drafter review the bill using general accepted Commonwealth 
legislative drafting practices. Uh, they mentioned, for, um, um, for instance, that the word hereby is used throughout the bill and it should be deleted as it is an outdated word, as well as other um, examples that they mentioned. And uh, the department's comment is that um, we note the comment by the Western Cape. And um, we just want to um, also just mention that the bill was edited and it was certified and it was found to be in order by the Office of the Chief State Law Advisors. Yeah. If we can go to the next slide, please, um, Rolf. Uh, the, uh, the next slide also um, refers to comment received by the Western Cape government. Now, um, uh, uh, the Legal Resource Council um, basically also um, in their submission this morning addressed the same issues as was addressed or as is addressed here by the Western Cape government. And it relates to the amendment of section four of the sectional titles act that deals with the approval of development schemes. Now the Western Cape says meetings with lessees need to be announced timelessly and at a reasonable location. And they say it is recommended that an annexure outlining the requirements of meetings with lessees be announced timelessly and at a reasonable fun a location. And there's also, it needs to be clearly stated what would constitute a um, timeless um, announcement as well as what the determining factors would be for a meeting location to be determined. Um, and then they also say um, lessees need to be trained and educated on their roles and responsibilities. Um, and the matter of education um, fully uh, being elaborated mm -hmm. on by the Legal Resource Centre this morning in their um, submission. Now, the department does not um, um, uh, support um, the amendment with regard to the timeliest um, and reasonable location. And it's merely because matters with regard to the time frames and the location of meetings are already addressed in section 43A of the Act, where it specifically provides that meetings will not be constituted unless a lessee has been notified in writing by a developer, by a, a, letter, a letter, a letter either being developed personally or by registered post, post of a date at least 14 days um, after the delivery of such a letter. And uh, um, also the information regarding the rights of the lessees needs to be um, then informed by the developers at such meetings. And section 43A of the Act currently does deal with um, that um, um, dispatchment and, and the time of uh, that meetings. Now, with regard to the concerns regarding education, um, like Mr. Goga has mentioned, and I will also just give you um, a brief history on Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, uh, just on one of my further slides. But uh, the department uh, um, is also like the Law Society after opinion that these matters must be dealt with by the Department of Human Settlements, who are the administrators of the Sectional Titles Schemes Management Act that is Act 8 of 2011. And that act um, specifically deals with your managerial and consumer related issues. Uh, for instance, um, um, uh, the rules that must be amended, levies that must be paid, insurances, et cetera. And then also Act 9 of um, 2011, that is your Community Schemes Ombud Service Act, Act 9 of 2011. That is also being um, administered by the Department of Human Settlements. But I'll give a brief background on those two acts on one of my uh, later slides. Ralph, if we can just go to the next slide, please. Um, um, it also deals with um, the purpose of meetings should be clearly explained in layman's terms and be available in writing. And uh, the Western Cape says it is recommended that there uh, is a requirement to include the purpose of meetings to be clearly explained in layman's language, and that this should be available in writing. And um, then the department does not support this. As we said previously, this matter is being fully covered in section 4.3 of the Act, 
um, and it provides for developers to provide lessees with particulars of the relevant scheme that is now to be um, converted to a sectional title scheme and to also um, 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 inform the um, um, occupants of their rights as set out in section 10. And it also, section 403 also provides that the developer uh, um, needs to answer all reasonable questions that the lessees present to the developer at such meetings, the developer needs to answer uh, those uh, questions. So section 43 is sufficient in uh, that regard. Then the second bullying, bullet um, by the uh, uh, Western Cape government speaks to language differences within uh, different areas. And they say language differences may cause a, a communication barrier at um, the meeting. And we have noted um, this co uh, comment and our um, response is that language matters should be addressed by the developer with the answering of the questions. Section 43B provides now for the developer to address the questions um, of lessees at the so-called meetings that um, the developers called and the developers should address a language and matters um, at such meetings. Um, taking translators or, or um, people, interpreters with the developer to such meeting then to address um, um, lessees that may, um, you know, um, address questions in different languages. And that this is not a matter that must be taken up in the Sectional Titles Act. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please, Rolf. It further deals with um, uh, section four um, by the Western Cape that says lessees have to understand the roles and functions of bodies corporate in order to undertake their expected roles and functions, which will ensure effective management of their development and that the body corporate uh, functions optimally. And they say it's recommended that the roles and functions of the body corporate be outlined and clarified to the lessees before or, or as early into the registration of the body corporate as possible. And I uh, also say the second bullet, to ensure transparency and to record management, the feedback from meetings uh, should uh, be published and uh, distributed. Now, the department, um, it's not supporting um, um, uh, the amendment of Section 4 to deal with the roles and functions of body corporate and to deal with effective management now, specifically, the roles and functions of body corporate, the roles and um, duties of owners um, and, and the management, um, which they emphasize there in, in the first bullet, all those aspects are, are specifically being dealt with in Act 8 of 2011. And that is your sectional title schemes management act, um, specifically deals with, uh, um, with um, the managing and, uh, you know, the roles and functions of the body corporate. Um, so uh, th this um, uh, uh, amendment is not supported to be addressed in the Sectional Titles Act. I can maybe just mention here that um, also the Sectional Titles Act, it must be remembered that the Sectional Titles Act deals with your registration issues as well as your surveying issues. Um, I know the... Um, the Legal Resources Council talked about the link. There's this link with the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act and the Sectional Titles um, Act itself. But it's not only the Sectional Titles Act and the Sectional Titles Management Act. You also have the Community Schemes Ombud Service Act and you have your Land Survey Act. All those uh, pieces of legislation deals with sectional titles matter, matters, but every act deals with different aspects. Your Sectional Titles Act deals with your surveying issues and your registration issues. It's very technical and only with those issues. Your Sectional Title Schemes Management Act deals with your consumer-related and managerial-related issues. You know, how will your uh, 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 body corporate um, um, make the rules? How can the rules be amended? How much levies must be paid? Um, uh, how must the... Um, uh, 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 Community, communal areas be uh, maintained. Um, uh, all those uh, matters are specifically being addressed in your Sectional Title Schemes Management Act. And then, of course, your um, Community Schemes Ombud Service Act deals with 
resolutions or, or, or the dispute mechanisms um, being provided for uh, and to be adjudicated um, by by your community schemes. Uh, the chief ombud um, deals with those issues and the um, community schemes ombud management act. So different pieces of legislate, uh, legislation uh, being dealt with in different um, acts and also being administered by different departments, being um, rural um, agricultural land reform and rural development, as well as the Department of Human Settlements. If we can please go to the next slide. Um, and now the next slide was um, uh, dealt with um, uh, uh, also the amendment of section four of the act um, by the Legal Resources Council. So if I can also at the same, um, in this same slide, just also comment on the submission that they did this morning. Um, the department um, appreciate the comment by the Legal Resource Center and the work that they are doing in providing assistance to schemes. We can see that they are very passionate in what they are doing. And um, they referred also then to the Sectional Titles Act at 95 of 86 that was amended by Act 8 of 2011. That is your Sectional Title Schemes Management Act. Now, um, prior to the enactment of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, um, the Sectional Titles Act um, um, addressed uh, surveying issues, registration issues, as well as managerial issues and consumer-related issues. The regulations specifically had an annexure eight, um, and which it also provided for arbitration matters, etc. Uh, even the Office of the Chief Register of Deeds at that stage appointed arbitrators to deal with um, disputes in sectional title schemes. But there was an outcry um, before 2016 by sectional title owners. They wanted a, an ombud to, to also address disputes in sectional title schemes. So at that stage, the Department of Human Settlements also approached our department and said, we must look into separating consumer-related issues from your registration and surveying issues. And at that stage, uh, they also then um, appointed a consultant to draft the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act that now currently deals with your Sectional Title Schemes um, matters. It's specifically, like I said, it addresses matters like your, your rules. How do you amend rules? How do you substitute rules? Your levies, how, must, uh, how much money must people apply towards levies? Um, the maintenance of the common property, um, um, uh, the adju adjudication um, 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 measures. So the arbitration was uh, done away with and your um, uh, um, the chief ombuds office were then um, uh, um, uh, constituted in terms of section nine or, or act nine of 2011. So then um, act eight and act nine of 2011 um, was enacted on uh, 7th of October, 2016. And that um, at that stage, it created a separation between your registration matters and your um, surveying matters on the one hand that is being um, administered by Department of Agricultural Land Reform and Rural Development on the one hand. And on the other hand, you now since 2016 have the Department of Human Settlement that administers your Sectional Title Schemes Management Act that deals with um, all the consumer-related issues that are being addressed and, and, and that was and is a concern of the Legal Resource Centre and, uh, we, uh, and, of course, of the Western Cape um, government. And uh, the department is of the opinion that um, education must be um, addressed not in the Sectional Titles Act, and it should rather be addressed and, and be um, directed to the Department of Human Settlements for their attention and for their consideration. And maybe to also, you know, uh, to cause amendments to the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, Act 8 of 2011, to specifically address these consumer-related matters and the education um, in sectional title schemes but not to amend the Sectional Titles Act that deals with um, your uh, registration and 
surveying matters. So if we can please go to the next slide, uh, Ralph. Um, it deals with the amendment of Clause 7 of the Act. Uh, clause 7 deals with the approval of um, a, a draft sectional plans by a surveyor general. Now, uh, it's comment from the Western Cape government, and they propose, uh, the bill proposes that a certificate in terms of Section 7 of the Principal Act must be amended to include a confirmation of compliance um, with the provisions of Section 26.2 of the Spatial Planning and Land Use Management Act. So the bill um, uh, in Clause 3 does uh, provide for um, an amendment of this specific certificate that needs to be lodged by a land surveyor or an architect and that where they must confirm that um, um, uh, um, the plan complies with the provisions of Section 26.2 of SPLUMA. So they have a very lengthy um, explanation over three pages in, in which uh, they um, explain why they um, are against the amendment um, to Section 7. Uh, which the department read through and we considered um, their comment and we've noted it and we um, um, we agree with them that the, the current provisions of the Act must remain as it is and that the certificate in terms of Section 7-2A of the Act can only be based on approval that has been issued by the relevant municipality and that the reference in the set, uh, Section 7-2 where it makes reference to any law, that um, that uh, reference to any law um, includes a reference to the Spatial Planning and Land Management Act, which then makes uh, this amendment um, not necessary. So the department agrees with um, um, the Western Cape that um, this amendment may be um, um, omitted from the bill and that it is not necessary. Rolf, if we can then maybe just go to um, um, clause, um, I think it's, you can go to the next slide. Uh, we've actually dealt with that. We've dealt with that. It is all um, relates to, you can go to the next slide, please. I have spoken to this now. There is where they um, speak about uh, why they do not support the amendment to section. Can we go to slide 17, please, Rolf? Hello, can we go to slide 17, please? That's it, thank you. Um, uh, this is, is comment by the Western Cape and it relates to uh, clause six of the bill that deals with the amendment of section 17 of the act and section 17 um, provides for the alienation and letting of common property in a sectional title scheme. And uh, the Western Cape says it is noted that the words all part thereof were omitted in the fourth line of the proposed subsection 4BA. And they say, please consider the words all part thereof, which appear earlier in the subsection. And um, that should also be omitted. And it's not supported. Um, we did a real look um, the wording of a section 74BA in clause 6B. And um, the clause is indeed correctly uh, drafted. And those words. Um, uh, need not to be omitted. If we can go to the next um, clause, please. Um, now, um, this, the next, all the next slides um, in the presentation deals with comment that was received by um, the general public. I think there's about 20 different comments that were received and um, uh, the comment was not always clear. Uh, some people will say they support the bill, others would say they will not support the bill. Um, and they, um, for instance, um, um, it just says, my top concern is right of developers, but no reasons are actually provide for the concerns. It just says the rights of developers. And in the next column, it um, um, comment will say, my top concern is exclusive use areas but no, no reasons is actually provided um, for um, the concern and, and specific clauses in the bill where the concern um, is, is related to. Um, 
I think um, when, if we go to the next slide, uh, please, Rolf, I can maybe just read a couple of the concerns and then I'll comment here. It just says, I do not support the sectional titles amendment bill. Um, it gives powers to developers, potentially changes rules on previously agreed exclusive use areas, and it will greatly increase expenditure of body corporate to update and maintain a new regulator, uh, regulation documents. And the other comment was, I, I, um, any changes should be agreed to by um, everybody. Now, of course, um, if we look at that comment, you can clearly see it, it, it relates to rules um, 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 and, 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 and the powers of the body corporate. And as I previously said, amendment of the rules are specifically being dealt with in the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act. Um, a section 10 of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act provides for rules to be approved or to be amended or to be um, replaced and upon approval by the Office of the Chief Ombud. Um, so uh, these matters should be addressed um, by um, the Department of Human Settlements. And if um, um, I think also when it comes to education, uh, uh, these um, um, uh, um, owners and sectional title schemes need to know that they have a right, they pay levies, and that they have a right to approach the sectional title schemes en route in terms of the provisions of uh, section, um, uh, um, um, I think section four of the um, Act 9 of 2011, that is your Community Schemes en route Service Act, uh, uh, um, uh, owners in sectional title schemes can approach at the sectional titles ombud to um, assist them with matters and sectional titles schemes. So um, these, um, like I said, does not relate to the content of the sectional titles amendment bill, and it does not uh, relate actually to any matters that are addressed in the sectional titles act uh, that deals with registration uh, related matters. We can go to the next slide, please, Rob. Um, yeah, also a comment by Dani. He says that um, um, amendments will prevent investors earning more interest on current portfolios. Um, um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the department can't comment on this. It's unclear um, to which provisions it actually relates. Andre says only um, have one house and he cannot afford to lose it. Um, and Mulek says the highest percentage of the pension fund contributors um, um, is from the rural areas. However, where, when their funds are only used to develop urban areas, that does not benefit the loss contributors to the fund. And Jane says we do not wish to become a nanny state. More and more regulation increase costs for homeowners, and it makes it more complicated to live in a sectional title complex as it uh, should remain the choice of the body corporate to decide whether they want a managing agent and stop this empowering homeowners. We are adults and we will make our own decision. Now, you can see here, um, um, there's definitely, um, like the Legal Resource Council and the Western Cape says, there's definitely a need for education to members or to owners and leases and sectional title schemes. Um, and to specially educate them on the provisions of that sectional title schemes and management act. Um, so uh, what we just said there in our response is there is no legislative provision that stipulates that the body corporate are required to appoint managing agents and aspects relating to the managerial issues are dealt with in the sectional title schemes management act. Now the legal resource council is welcome to contact me I've got um, contact details of people at the community uh, um, 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 the chief ombud services in Johannesburg, and I can provide them, and we can try to set up a meeting with them if the legal resources centre deems that possible, but or, or necessary. But I, I think um, um, uh, the community office, together um, with the Department of Human Settlement, is the forum that um, must be um, contacted to address um, these managerial and consumer-related issues, as well as the education 
um, that is needed in this regard. Can we please go to the next slide, uh, please? Um, uh, uh, Cecile says, stop disempowering homeowners. We are adults and will make our own decisions. Peter says, provided my neighbors are not concerned, then I feel that my property is my concern. If I wish to expand the number of people or houses on it, there are simple rules to keep health under control. Um, Mr. Matuli says, our government should prioritize our South Africans and make sure no foreigners are able to buy land in South Africa at all, but rent it out so that they can use these funds to develop small, um, uh, support small businesses in South Africa, and also to rebuild all the damaged buildings in Johannesburg and remove people. Um, Darlene says, I must study all the documents. However, develop, developers lie to buyers and sellers um, to make money. Controls are a good thing and assist in good governance and town planning. If your own property are um, very fortunate, or if you own property, you are very fortunate and know that it does not make you entitled to a point or um, of ignoring the bigger picture. Uh, the next slide, please, Rolf. I will just read through these. Um, Sinalo supports the bill. It says it's a step in the right di direction. We need these regulations. But he says, I would like to keep my freedom of choice and my democratic right to do as I please with my property as long as it improves the value and living standards. Um, Nicholas says, there's nothing good that can come from anyone having a free right on somebody else's hard work. Um, he says, uh, the government eats money, leaves nothing. Um, uh, the day this country will thrive again um, is the day when corruption stops and people learn how to um, earn and work for a future. Michelle says, I feel that uh, some exclusive use areas are in awkward places, patio, a fenced off garden. Why would this not uh, be part of the title? Now, the comment there with regard to Michelle is... Um, the whole concept of sectional titles will change if patios and fence of gardens become a part of the title of a section. And in terms of the act, only buildings may be divided into sections and land is common property, but on land there can be uh, fenced off gardens for the exclusive use. So, of course, yes, with a sectional title, you have a title deed for your unit, for your section. And then, of course, you can have a, a separate title deed uh, for your exclusive use areas. So it is possible to hold two separate titles in sectional title scheme. And of course, the common property is then owed by all the owners in the sectional title uh, scheme. They owe uh, the common property in accordance to um, 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 the, uh, the extension of um, their units. They owe a, um, a participation quota in the common property. If we can just go to the next slide, um, please. I'll read through all of these, um, um, and, but although the department just noted, um, we didn't um, comment, as I said, it is difficult. Um, these comments do not uh, relate uh, to the bill. Uh, some do not relate to any legislation, but you can see there is a crowd out for, for education in sectional title schemes. Liesl says there's nothing good that can come from anybody having a free right on somebody else's hard work. This is a repeat from a, a, a previous um, um, a comment. Uh, in the last paragraph, she said, I would like to keep my freedom of choice and my democratic right to do as I pleased with my property as long as it improves in value and living standards. Jay says, my top concerns is right of developers. Too many areas are becoming overdeveloped and the infrastructure does not support it. Developers need to be curtailed. Let them find new areas to target and leave those that are already congested and straining alone. For example, uh, table view. Um, now we do note um, that comment, and um, we just want to mention there that the, the, the approval of development schemes are not regulated in terms of the sectional titles act, but it is regulated in terms of the SPLUMA Act, the Spatial Planning and uh, Land Act. Uh, then Lynette says too many areas are becoming overdeveloped and the um, infrastructure does not support it. 
you can see here it is, uh, it's a repeat of um, the um, comment that was made by Jess, uh, where she refers to a table mountain um, that has many um, issues with traffic and infrastructure. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, Siloan says, I do not agree. Uh, in short, it's unfair. It's disruptively biased. Uh, uh, don't people have rights um, anymore? Uh, government is taking things too far. Uh, Cheryl says, any changes uh, that the government wants to make never seems to be for the good of the people of the country and always to, uh, be to, uh, seems to be for their benefit. And Ruanet says, too many areas are becoming overdeveloped. Here you can see it's um, a repeat of the previous one, um, which uh, um, relates to um, um, uh, the development um, uh, issues that are being dealt with and being um, regulated in terms of the provisions of SPLUMA. Um, the next slide, please, um, Rolf. This slide and, and the last slide is also basically um, a reflection of um, um, one another, as uh, Jane um, Janine says, sectional title holders have the right through the Bill of Rights to use their land to secure their families and assets and finances. And land when financed needs to be paid, paid for full to change ownership. Some land, because of risks of earthquake or flooding or radioactive disease, uh, contamination to the largest population needs to remain zoned exclusively for a purpose. Some land has large sinkholes below them. Again, here, of course, the Spluma Act that regulates uh, the approval of development schemes. Uh, then she gives another example of the Clip Refuge Nature Reserve in Gauteng, that is the intersection of multiple geological uh, uh, fault lines. Um, and then there's another example uh, of land that has Title deeds reflected a United Nations Global Heritage Site for national government key point structures, or is land that is in perpetuity is to uh, belong to the living God and just to be managed by uh, trustees. Um, then uh, in item four, paragraph four, she says, taking an ARF and splitting it into sectional titles should therefore be exercised with caution because government is supposed to be securing the rights of all citizens and not just one group of corrupt citizens wanting to take exclusive use areas and change them into a different zoning for the development of properties and to finally award international um, syndicates. Um, and number five, similar to how Germany and the USA and China, the land of South Africa should benefit the humans uh, fauna and flora, um, and before other uh, sovereignties are exercising their rights. And then the last slide is actually, um, it's, it's a repeat of, of, of what I have just read. Um, but if, if, if I can just, in, in short, just um, make a, a couple of short comments on, on, on um, submissions that were made this morning. Um, Annalene from um, legal Resources Centre said, no, the Sectional Titles Act can be amended to address these matters of education, etc., because the body corporate is established in terms of um, um, the Sectional Titles Act. Um, uh, um, Annalene, this is not the case any longer. The body corporate um, used to be established in terms of the provisions of Section 36 of the Sectional Titles Act. However, the Sectional Titles Schemes Management Act amended the Sectional Titles Act uh, when it was promulgated and enacted um, on, um, in October of 2016. So if you read Section 2 of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, you will see that a, section, uh, a body corporate is now being established in terms of the provisions of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, Section 2 of that Act. And due to that establishment, uh, these matters should indeed then be addressed by the Sectional Title Schemes and Management Act. Um, I am a Ms. Stein, Madam Stein, that referred to the Deeds Registries Amendment Bill. Um, um, I just want to mention there is that difference in the two acts. Of course, your, your Deeds Registries Act that deals with the registration of your conventional land. For instance, if you think uh, the registration of farmland, 
um, houses in town, your urban uh, registration of a land, a real right in land, opening of townships, um, servitudes, etc. Those matters are uh, being addressed and are being registered in terms of the provisions of the Deeds Registries Act. The Sectional Titles Act, however, deals with uh, the registration of the opening um, of sectional title schemes. That um, is, is, is separate and is different um, when you think of your block of flats, um, your hotels, your shopping centres. Those are sectional title schemes where an owner will own an, a unit, for instance, a flat, and, and all other owners will own flats. And under one title, they may, uh, for instance, have all their exclusive use areas under another title. But all those owners together uh, own the common property um, according to um, the, um, um, uh, um, the share, the, um, the size of their unit will determine the percentage of um, share that they have in the common property. And, and that um, participation quota, that share, will then determine also, of course, their responsibility with regard to the payment of levies um, um, for the upkeeping of your common property. And with common property, you, for instance, think of your, your elevators, um, the parking bays, swimming pools, tennis courts, um, and those things are common property. And, and so the registrations in terms of the Sectional Titles Act and the Deeds Registries Act um, are, um, are, are separate. Then I also just quickly want to, um, uh, lastly, just uh, make reference to uh, the Flaming Court case. The Legal Resource Centres make reference to the Flaming Court case. Now, in the, um, in the submission um, that uh, they provided in paragraph um, 24 of the Legal Resources Council, um, um, if I may read it, it just says the Legal Resources um, represented three units um, owners in the Durban Regional Court, which held that the deciding in this matter, mm -hmm. the human rights of the residents of the Flamingo Court body corporate needed to be upheld in the application of the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act. So this act also, or this court specifically also, made reference to the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act. And therefore, um, the department is of the view that those matters must be addressed in that act, the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, and not in the Sectional Titles Act itself. And that is all from my side. Thank you very much. Um, Mamu Reynolds, thank you for the presentation. Uh, DG, back to you. Thank you, Chair. That would that would conclude our presentation. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ramasodi. Uh, as also honorable members thank the department uh, for the presentation that uh, they've put on the responses uh, on the oral and written public comments uh, on the sectional titles amendment bill. I will therefore honorable members open the session for questions of clarity. Uh, honorable Kape. Yeah, thanks very much. Let me welcome the presentation by the department, their responses. I think, uh, Chair, I want to, to agree on most of the responses to this um, amendment. One, I'm quite happy on the response on the exclusive area use because I believe it covers the interest of the leases to some of the areas it's problematic. I'm saying this, Chair, because uh, we're seeing more of our generation, especially our first-time workers, this... Uh,
uh, you with that get tertiaries. Most of them are floating. Okay, what we're doing here should cover, like I initially say, those that are vulnerable. But chairs, you go to the public comments, not the organized uh, bodies comments. You realize that um, just like most of us, our people don't know that there's a another act linked to this that deals with management issues. Your sectional titles uh, scheme management act, which then says, in as much as educational issues, according to the department, should be uh, sent to human settlement. Awareness, awareness and education is very key because most of the time, like those that wanted to comment and other comments were not clear, it's based on administrative and management issues. It will be very key, Chair, that this act covers as such. Hence, you see most people not commenting because it's more like for organized bodies and corporate. So if this act will help the people that are leasing properties, because uh, even if you are not leasing, most people are taking this sectional title apartments like investment. So it will be very prudent that everything else is done also to cover their interest. But in all fairness, Chair, I'm okay. I would want at some stage, I wish we had time just to look into the sectional uh, title management act. Or does it help or does it speak to this concerns that has been raised by ordinary members of the public? Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Tape. Mamustain. Lungel Bekegleyo, Mamustain. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, uh, Chairperson, I'm covered by Honourable Tlape. I agree. Um, it, it is actually a pity that we didn't have time to look at the other one. I know we're not dealing with it, but I think, Chairperson, at some stage, if possible, we need to maybe speak uh, to the committee of um, housing. I, I don't know what they called now. Um, just to see, because... Going forward, I think it is going to be more and more important that we do educate people on that, especially um, the sectional title, uh, uh, the one dealing with the body corporates, so that we can uh, see if there's something later that together between the departments we want to uh, take on change. And thank you for the department for the Clarification, I think it makes things clearer now. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Honorable State. Uh, Honorable Memasho. Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Kasia is very clear. Uh, what Tlape uh, has mentioned, it has already covered me. Uh, the most important thing that is uh, key on these issues is uh, awareness campaign, which must be done to all the people of South Africa so that they can be able to understand and know what is this all about. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Tlape. Uh, Mamun Babama. Nkosi chairperson and this opinion to be tetuang a banye nam dia vumelana no uba ingati besina li clash you know to look at the, the, the other acts that uh, follow up on this. But I think that uh, Mayor Reynolds did an excellent job and uh, things are clearer in my mind, definitely. Thank you, um, Ms. Reynolds. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mbabama. Honorable uh, Thank you, Chair. Let me also thank the elaborate presentation by the, by the department, especially on the clarity on that part of uh, education and awareness. Maybe only part that one, one can emphasize here is the awareness about awareness. In this case, I mean the awareness that our people on the ground maybe to make 
them know that this education and this awareness is available there. Was in most or in all cases, our people just know one government. Uh, it's always a duty and a task to explain to them that information, this one is available there and this one is available there. Otherwise, this is a, it, this helps and the department to me, there's done enough homework. I thank you, Chair. I joined other colleagues. Thank you, Honorable Tapa. The Honorable Ntate Masipa. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thanks again to the presenter, uh, Mrs. Uh, Reynolds. Um, Chair, I think the issue of financial impact will probably be presented a little bit later by the department. Uh, if it was if it was covered, I might have missed it, but I think we need to look at that. Um, that's it from my side. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, uh, Honorable Ndate Masipa. Ndabezita, Nkosengkulu, the Honorable Tabekulu. Thank you, Chairperson. I uh, agree with uh, the colleagues that have uh, uh, positive uh, 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 receive, reception of, of, of the, the presentation, uh, and I don't have a question or, 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 or comment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Ndabezita. Uh, the Honorable Member Shadzi, I can uh, note that uh, you are having uh, network challenges, but do you have any questions on this presentation? Any other Honorable Member on the platform that I have not recognized? Mamo Antoinette uh, Reynolds, thank you uh, for the really in-depth uh, presentation uh, on the sectional title deeds. And I think uh, honorable members are very uh, uh, satisfied on uh, the input that the department uh, has had. Uh, and uh, uh, I think on our side, uh, honorable members, uh, we will uh, uh, look into uh, the issues that uh, have been uh, put uh, by the department uh, to us and then be able to uh, take it uh, further as to what else can be done. But uh, perhaps uh, I can... Uh, look into uh, the last uh, issue on uh, the sectional titles scheme legislation on uh, uh, my side as to uh, was uh, the was it uh, uh, conducted and if uh, the department was able to conduct that uh, can the department be able to share the information uh, regarding uh, SIA? In that, Ramasodi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, in terms of the CS, we, we have uh, concluded that. Um, uh, as part and puzzle of the consultation process uh, before coming to, to Parliament. Uh, I'll give over to Meryl Knowles to cover the other issues that the Chair has raised. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think, uh, Chair, I think you, you're referring to the SEA with regard to the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act. That, yes. that, was, that was quite a process. Um, we worked in consultation with the Department at Human Settlements. Um, 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 as I mentioned, they um, appointed a consultant, Brain Paddock and Associates, um, who, at, who helped them to draft the two acts. So they did the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act uh, together with your Community Schemes Ombud Service Act. That is Act 8 and Act 9 of 2011. So that department actually must have done the SAYAS. 
Um, because what they've done is in the schedule to the Act itself, in the schedule to the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, uh, they had a schedule, and in that schedule, they provided for the amendment of the Sectional Titles Act. So um, in the Sectional Titles Act, um, we had uh, provisions that provided for the duties and responsibilities of the owners in Sectional Title Schemes, the duties and responsibilities of your body's corporate um, and uh, the establishment of a body corporate, and in the rules um, also in the um, in the regulations, um, was your managerial and um, uh, management rules and conduct rules, and and and, and all of that um, were removed when that Act Eight uh, came into operation. Um, um, the schedule uh, to that Act that amended the Sectional Titles Act came into operation on seven October. Um, 2016, and it automatically on that um, date removed from the Sectional Titles Act all those consumer and managerial related issues. And it basically, it was almost a copy and paste, I must say, from our Act into this um, Act 8 of 2011. But um, it's very interesting if you want to go and read Act 8 and Act 9 of 2011. And also the regulations, the regulations to the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act now um, has, a, has a, um, um, the statutory managerial issues and the statutory conduct um, rules that are applicable to sectional titles. So if a developer, for instance, open a sectional title scheme and he does not want to use those specific um, um, uh, managerial issues or consumer issues, as it is provided for in the regulations to Act 8 of 2011, they can apply to CSOS, to the Community Service Ombud in um, Johannesburg, to have those rules, those statutory rules, replaced by other rules. So your Ombud, um, um, your, the Chief Ombuds Office, is the only person that actually um, uh, these days approve and amend um, schemes and a sectional title. And also now then, of course, those um, acts are being administered by uh, the Department of Human Settlements. And as I mentioned in my presentation, Section 18 of that act provides for, um, like we have the sectional title schemes or the sectional title regulation board, they have a sectional title a managerial board that is established in terms of Section 18 of that act. And I think a lot of these uh, matters um, of the Legal Resource um, Centre, if they can contact Human Settlements and the Ombuds um, Service and refer all those matters to that board. Because um, if you think of the Sectional Titles um, um, Regulation Board, of which Mr. Goga of the Law Society um, that presented today, he's also a member of that board. Um, we, um, on those boards, um, the members of the board look at proposed amendments to the Act and to the regulations to the Act um, uh, um, to refer it to the Minister for amendment of the Act. So if the Legal Resource Council then can make a submission to that board that is as established in terms of the Schemes Management Act and ask them to relook possible amendments to that Act 8 and um, Act 9 of 2011 and maybe even the regulations to that act to address um, these matters. But um, I just wanted to say it then, um, we didn't do a CS, not our department, because that um, 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 act is uh, administered by human settlements. So they will be in position of a CS to that act. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mamu Reynolds. Uh, Dr. Ramasodi, we, that's a rep on the side of the department. It is a rep, uh, Honorable Chair, and thank you very much um, to the Honorable Members. No, thank you, uh, DG and the officials of the department. Let us uh, thank uh, uh, Mayor Antoinette Reynolds uh, for a real comprehensive presentation and uh, responses uh, from the department.
uh, also take uh, this opportunity uh, to thank uh, both the submissions that were made by the Law Society of South Africa from uh, Mr. Hussan Koka, as well as the submission that was uh, made to the Portfolio Committee uh, from the Legal Resource Center, uh, both by uh, Sharita Samuels as well as uh, Anelin. Uh, you've uh, really uh, extended the work uh, that we do in terms of understanding uh, the issues embedded within these uh, sectional titles amendment bill. Uh, we will now, honorable members, uh, proceed with uh, uh, the last uh, item on of our agenda, which is uh, the portfolio committee. Uh, issues. So, uh, officials of the department, Tade uh, Ramasodi, if you wish, you may exit uh, the platform. Uh, let us also thank uh, the Deputy uh, Minister, Umamu Kapa, for having uh, uh, availed herself uh, for uh, the today's session. And uh, we look forward uh, to further engagements. Uh, with uh, uh, her as we proceed. Honorable members, the last item on our agenda is the consideration and adoption of our minutes dated the 1st of June, 2021. Let us proceed. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Thank you, honorable members. Can I have a mover for the adoption of the minutes of the 1st of June, 2021? Honorable member. The chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, I hear to move for the Minutes of the 1st of June 2021 as a true reflection. We seem to have lost you, Honorable Memato. Wow. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please continue. Chairperson, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Yes, Chair, I was, I was, I was saying that I, I, yes, I stand to move for the minutes of the 1st of June 2021 as a true reflection. Honorable Member moves for the adoption of the minutes of the 1st of June 2021 as a true reflection of the meeting we held. Can I have a second, honorable members? 
Honorable Ntate Masipa. Honorable Ntate Masipa. Sorry, Chair. Um, I was just struggling with the uh, unmuting myself. Yeah. I, move, I move for the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection. I move to second, sorry. Thank you, uh, Honorable Ntate Masipa. Move uh, uh, seconds the adoption of the minutes of the 1st of June 2021. Any matters arising, Honorable Members? Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. If uh, there are no matters arising, honorable members, I take it therefore that uh, the minutes of the 1st of June 2021 are duly adopted. Like uh, to take this opportunity, honorable members, to thank all of you for availing yourselves for uh, this uh, first meeting on our third term uh, of uh, Parliament. Uh, and uh, wish you all well in uh, the weeks to come as we engage with our parliamentary duties. I should uh, uh, highlight that uh, this uh, week, we will uh, be having a three-line whip where all honorable members are uh, anticipated to be in full attendance as we will be uh, uh, electing the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, I wish you all safe travels to the mother city, the beautiful city of Cape Town, and uh, uh, plead with all of you to continue to sanitize and wear your mask as uh, uh, COVID numbers in the Western Cape uh, have been uh, uh, at an alarming high note. I uh, wish you well and do enjoy the rest of the afternoon. The meeting stands adjourned. Thank you, Chair. And you will go and watch the snow this weekend in the Eastern Cape. Thank you, Chair. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking forward to that. And go sit at our
Inkosi, inkosi, mpangomo. Inkosi, ntatuwa mwakwekwe. Inkosi, bebato. Ibule ele matiwa. Bebato. Mwama bela kuzu kuzu. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Do you need us? Mm -hmm. Hmm? I didn't need him. You don't need us. Is there no need to talk about program? Which one? Uh, the committee program. The program. Oh, sorry. sorry. The YouTube is still on, guys. Sorry. I see that I... YouTube. YouTube is still on. Yeah. Can you ask the guys to, to disconnect so that we can just stay on for a few minutes? Wait, Pumla. Did it, I'm saying that you still have YouTube. Hi, both. <laughs> Wait, Pumla. Ask the YouTube guy to switch, to, to switch us off. chief. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, but 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 if it's being broadcast, Colleagues, give me one second to uh, recording to stopped. Okay, they've disconnected. Is... No, hold on. No, no, hold on. these matters of um, housing. We have the sexual tax schemes. The mover for the adoption uh, COVID numbers in the Western Cape uh, have been uh, uh, at an alarming high note. Mm -hmm. I wish you well and do enjoy the rest of the afternoon. The meeting stands adjourned. <laughs>